the normal and binormal vectors. So imagine that we have a space curve over here. And now let's pick a point on the curve. And then what happened? Well, at this point, here is the unit tangent vector, label T. And what happened here is there are many vectors that's orthogonal to this unit tangent vector. So if I use this unit tangent vector here as a normal vector, and I can draw a plane, and any vector on this plane is going to be orthogonal to this unit tangent vector. There are infinitely many vectors here on the plane that's orthogonal to this vector t. Now we're going to single out one vector that's orthogonal to this unit tangent vector here um, by observing that because the unit tangent vector here has magnitude to be 1, it is a unit tangent vector, so magnitude is 1, and that's for all t. So all of this t has magnitude to be 1. So we have t dotted with t prime of t will be equal to the scalar zero. Why? Uh, let's pause a moment, you think about it first. So I put a sign note here to explain that why. Remember from example 4 in section 13.2, uh, we show that if the magnitude of this RT is equal to a constant C, which means that that space curve is going to be on this sphere with radius C, then what happens is R prime of T is going to be orthogonal to R of T. So the tangent vector and the position vector, they will be orthogonal. So if you have a curve that's embedded on this sphere, the tangent vector and the position vector, they form a 90 degree angle, they're orthogonal. Okay, and this is for all t. So just any curve on this sphere, and that's gonna happen. So the tangent vector is always perpendicular to the position vector rt. Now going back to this, because all this unit tangent vector has magnitude to be one, the curve of that is going to be on a sphere with radius one and centered to be the origin, right? So, so it's going to be on that sphere. And therefore, uh, according to the example we just talked about, t of t dot it with t prime of t will be equal to zero. And t prime of t is going to be orthogonal to t of t by the example we just talked about. So I notice that t prime of t is itself not a unit vector. So we have a unit vector t of t. However, the derivative of that is not necessarily a unit vector. Remember, t of t is the unit tangent vector. t prime of t is the rate of change of that. So the rate of change of this unit tangent vector is not necessarily a unit vector. Can you come up with an example? That's something new for you to think about. But at any point where the curvature does not equal to zero, we can define the principal unit normal vector, and let's call that n of t, or sometimes we just call that unit normal as this. So this is a unit vector because this divided by is magnitude, and it is called the principal unit normal vector, and sometimes we call that unit normal. So how are they all related? Let's look at this picture. So we have this unit tangent vector, and then we have this unit normal vector, and then cross product of this T and N is this B, and that's called a binormal vector. So they are all orthogonal to each other. The cross product of this T and N is also a unit vector. And here is an explanation. So the, the magnitude of the cross product of A and B is given by this. So if you have two unit vectors, so the magnitude here will be one and one. And because this T and N are unit vector, so this magnitude will be one here and one here. And then because they are orthogonal, 
Okay, they form a 90 degree angle. Sine of 90 degree will be one. So the magnitude of A cos B will be one. So when you have a unit vector caused with another unit vector, and if the angle between them is 90 degree, if they are orthogonal, then the cos product here will be also a unit vector. So the unit tangent vector the unit normal vector and the binormal vector, they are all unit vector and they're orthogonal to each other. Let's use this example to understand normal vector and binormal vector a little bit better. Okay. So remember the helix, okay, and the circular helix here. Remember the component function will be cosine t, sine t, and t. We first compute the ingredient. Uh, needed for the unit normal vector. So this is the formula for the unit normal vector n of t. So we need t prime. Right? Let's walk backward. So in order to get t prime, we first need to have t. Okay. And in order to get t, we first need remember t stands for unit tangent vector. So we need to have r prime because once you get r prime, then you can make it uh, a unit vector by divide by the magnitude of that. So let's find r prime first. r prime of t, uh, we will differentiate each component. We got this. Now we find the magnitude of r prime. The magnitude of r prime will be you square each component, you add them up, square this and square this. This two add up to one. One plus one is two. The magnitude of r prime is square root of two. Then we use r prime divided by its magnitude to find t. Because this unit tangent vector is r prime divided by its magnitude. So t of t will be equal to this divided by its magnitude. And then we got this result here. Now t prime of t, we're going to differentiate each component of t of t here. Then we will have this one because the duality negative sine t is negative cosine t. The duality of cosine t is, is negative sine t. And the duality of 1 is 0. So this is t prime of t. Once you have this, now look back to this formula. Uh, we also need to find the magnitude of t prime. The t magnitude of t prime over here. So take the square of each component. And then add them up and take the square root. So you get 1 over square root of 2. Now, according to the formula, we're going to take t prime divided by its magnitude. And that will be equal to this divided by this. So 1 over square root of 2 cancel. Uh, we'll get this vector over here. And what is this? That's a unit normal vector. So we got the unit normal vector here. We found the unit tangent vector. We also got the unit normal vector here. Here I have a picture, and you see the unit tangent vector for this point on the helix going this way. And this green one here is the unit normal vector. It's given by this. And you can see that this unit normal vector at any point of this helix is going to be horizontal because the z component is zero, and it points toward the z axis. And finally, the binomial vector is a cost product of t and n, and calculating the cost product, we got this. And this is the binomial vector. So here are more picture. This is the tangent vector. Here's the normal vector. Here's the binomial vector. Okay. Tangent vector, normal vector, binormal vector. So at this point of helix, the tangent vector goes this way. The normal vector point to the z-axis, and then the binormal vector go this way. Now let's see an animation. So here is the helix. The purple one here at this point, the purple one, the purple vector is a unit tangent vector. The the orange vector here point toward the z-axis is the unit normal vector n. And the blue one over here 
that's orthogonal to both the unit tangent and the unit normal vector. This is the binormal vector. Let's animate this. Along this space curve, this three vector will be at this different position. Now look at this figure over here. Here is the unit tangent vector. Here is the normal vector, the green one. And here is the binormal vector. They are orthogonal to each other. The normal vector, the principal normal vector, and the binormal vector determine a plane. And this plane over here is called the normal plane. We have this unit tangent vector. And we have this normal vector. And we have this binormal vector. You see that the normal vector and this binormal vector are orthogonal to this unit tangent vector. So it's going to be on this plane that has this tangent vector as a normal vector. So this plane over here is called the normal plane of the curve at this point P. Every line on this plane is going to be orthogonal to this T here. The plane that is determined by the unit tangent vector and the normal vector is this one over here. This is called an oscillating plane of the curve at this point P. It is a plane that comes closest to, to containing the part of the curve near P. If you have a plane curve, then the oscillating plane is simply the, the plane that contains the curve. So if you have a plane curve on the x, y plane, then this oscillating plane will be just the x, y plane. Now, if you have this curve C, and uh, if it's concave this way, then we can have a circle that lies in this oscillating plane. Remember, oscillating plane determined by the unit tangent and the unit normal vector. Uh, we can draw a circle on this plane with radius equal to 1 over the curvature of this curve at point P. And this circle will have the same tangent of this curve, C, at this point. So the tangent of this circle will be this, and that's also the tangent to this curve C at this point. Now for this circle, we're going to make it the radius to be 1 over the curvature of this curve at this point P, so 1 over K. So this circle over here, we call that the oscillating circle. And we also call that the circle of curvature of this curve at this point P. Now because the radius of the circle is 1 over the curvature of the curve at P, then they are going to have the same curvature. Uh, why? Take a minute and think about it. The reason for that was from example 3 we went over. Uh, we talk about the curvature of a circle with radius A is 1 over A. In other words, curvature and the radius of a circle, they are reciprocal. Since we choose this circle here to have radius to be 1 over the curvature, then the curvature of any point on the circle is going to be the same curvature K. Okay. This oscillating circle and the curve C, they are going to share the same tangent, normal, and curvature at this point P. Finally, let's put all the formula we have learned in this lesson together. The first formula, the unit tangent vector is going to be the tangent vector divided by its magnitude, is r prime of t divided by its magnitude. This one here is the unit normal vector, that's t prime of t divided by its magnitude. This is the binormal vector. It's the cost product of t and n, the cost product of this one and this one. And 
is again a unit vector. This formula here is for the curvature. Curvature measure how quickly the curve change direction. The quicker the curve change direction, the bigger the curvature. So is the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length. And that's also equal to the magnitude of t prime divided by r prime. And we can also calculate this way. That is the magnitude of r prime cos r double prime divided by the magnitude of r prime raised to the third power. And that concludes this lesson.